connected as a church body, and then we're connected through the Holy Spirit out on the internet. But you know, the real, the real uh, connection though is remember how when Jesus appeared after he was resurrected, he appeared to the two Marys. And then he appeared to, to, uh, to John and Peter. And then he appeared to the two on the road to Emmaus. They were together. There was no social distancing. All right. He appeared, and then he appeared to the ten the first time. And they were together. And guess what? They broke the ten. They were with the eleven on this time with Thomas. You know, the, the, the twin. Amen. And so, listen. Is that Jesus is coming, and that Jesus is going to release us. And uh, do you know that sometimes we give Thomas a bad rap? But he really had a lot of faith. He had a lot of faith. Uh, I don't. If you read in, in John chapter fourteen, Jesus is saying, "In my in my house is many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you." And uh, and he and he go, and Jesus said, "Where I'm going, you know where I'm going." And Thomas says, "Where are you going?" And Jesus said, I am the way, Thomas. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Thomas. Thomas was, was bold. When, when in, in John chapter 11, uh, Lazarus had, had died. And, and Jesus said, we need to go to him. And Jesus knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And, and, but it was two, two miles from Jerusalem. And they wanted to kill Jesus. And Thomas says, I'll go with you, Jesus. I'll die with you. And he was willing, so he had boldness. And some of, some of you out there, you've had boldness. And, and God, God loves each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. He doesn't want us to be discouraged. He wants us to be encouraged. He, he doesn't want us to be down. He wants us to, to be built up. He wants us to have strength, real resurrection power, real determination. That when this thing lifts, that we're going to serve God with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. Because we know he's coming soon. And there's a lot of people out there that need to see. They need to see Jesus in you and me. They need seeing and believing. They need. I needed to see believers around me that were serving God. I saw flakes, but I saw real believers around me. And, and, and a lot of times people focus on the flakes. And their, and their failures, but we need to look, and there are true believers around us. Model yourself after the true believers, and model yourself after Christ, because he is victorious, and he can change us. And you know that Thomas, Thomas, after he thrust his, his, his hands, and he touched Jesus, and, and he was so filled, he said, my Lord and my God, this was the first time in the book of John that somebody actually called Jesus God. He said, my Lord and my God. We know that Jesus was God all along. It's always been in, in church history that he was, you know, sometimes they em emphasize more his humanity. He was all man. And then sometimes more his deity. He was all God. But he's all God. He's all, he's, he's all man. He's with us. He's with you in the flames. He's with you. He's with you in this time. He's got, he's got hope. He's got healing. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And then you know what he did? Thomas went out from there as a preacher of righteousness. He was a missionary. Of course, all the apostles were. But he really made, he made quite a trek of faith. He went up into Iraq and preached the gospel that planted churches, he went into Iran, he, he preached the gospel, he planted churches, made disciples, he went into Pakistan, he preached the gospel, made disciples, he went down into India, and he made many disciples, that's why southern India, south India, still acknowledges Thomas, the apostle, who came down there and started you know, their ancestors' faith in Christ. It's the most Christian part of India, is South India, because of Thomas. He was not a doubter anymore. And don't you worry about your doubts. You know, exercise your faith, and your doubts will fade. Get born again. You must be born again. And I'm going to say a prayer, because unless you're born again, you're not going to understand and, and you're going to be full of unbelief, and, and it's dangerous. 
It's time now to get saved. It's time now to give your heart to Jesus. So I'm going to pray right now. If you want to give your heart to Jesus for real, then you pray with me right now. And then we're going to close with everybody in prayer. But just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive my sins. I have sinned against you, Father. Forgive my sins and heal me, God. Restore me. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Come, come live in me and you, let your power abide in me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Use me. I want to be your friend, God. I want to walk with you. I want to be ready for your coming. And I thank you now that I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I'm saved. My sins are forgiven. Rejoice. And so now I'm going to close with all of us. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for the work that you are doing in our hearts and in our lives and in our church and churches. Thank you, Lord, that you're getting us ready for a, a great in-gathering of people, the, the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to draw in many people, many backsliders coming back to you, many sons and daughters coming in, Lord God, unbelievers, skeptics coming in, doubters coming in, and we thank you, God, for filling us with joy, joy, and, and helping others, Lord. So fill us, Lord. Bless us now. And God bless you. And he is risen. Have a wonderful Sunday.